Uh, today we're going to do the 2006 AP Micro FRQ. Number two, obviously. The table above gives a short run total cost function for a typical firm in a perfectly competitive industry. What is the dollar value of the firm's total fixed cost? This is kind of a stock question they ask a lot. If they give you a table like this and we notice we haven't produced anything at this point, but our total costs are $20, then that means our fixed costs have to be 20 bucks. Remember, fixed costs are things like rent. So even if you produce zero units of something, you still have to pay your rent. If we own a taco truck, right, and I'm incompetent, and I don't produce any tacos whatsoever, I still owe my rent. So if we had to draw that, we know that we have a fixed cost or a total fixed cost if we need to. That is constant, doesn't change. We can see that that's $20 here. At zero units, our variable costs are zero. Remember, if we haven't produced anything, we have no variable cost. Variable costs are like labor. If you haven't produced anything, you have no labor yet. Obviously, fixed cost, or uh, total costs, sorry, start at zero at $20. These are our total costs because we know fixed cost plus variable cost equal total cost. So there are zero variable costs here because we produce no quantity. So that only can imply that that $20 has to be fixed cost. All right. I hope that's straight. B, calculate the marginal cost of producing the first unit of output. Recognize that you just have to know marginal cost here. They're going to ask you all through this course a ton of questions. Total product, you're going to have to find marginal product. Total cost, you're going to have to find marginal cost. Total revenue, you're going to have to find marginal revenue. Total benefit, you're going to have to find marginal benefit. You see the trend, right? Total utility, you got to find marginal utility. So just to go ahead and buckle down, make sure you understand it. Uh, so that the rest of the course is a little bit easier. It is, for this situation, our marginal cost equals a change in our total cost over a change in quantity. Recognize it for the college board here. 0 to 1, 1 to 2, 2 to 3, 3 to 4. Our change in quantity is just 1. So if our change in quantity is just 1, really all we're focusing on is this change in total cost um, because that change in quantity will always be just one. So let's get rid of this and recognize here that finding that marginal cost, let's just say for the, it, there is really no marginal cost for the first, there's zero units. But for this first unit, we could say, what is it, seven, 27, 37, 11, uh, 38 to 53, 38, 48, um, so 15, I think, 53 to 72. Uh, I like drawing them straight out to the side here. I know some people put them in the middle of these. I can't do that. It causes me all kinds of uh, psychic problems. Uh, anyway, 53, 63, 73, that would be 19. Um, and then 72 to 95, 72, 82, 92, 23. And then this looks like 27 here. All right, we've got our marginal cost. Calculate the marginal cost of the first unit of output. Easy enough. Here's our first unit of output. It is 7. So 20 here. Let's don't forget to answer them. 7 there. If the price of the firm receives for its product is $20, indicate the firm's profit maximizing quantity of output and explain how you determine that answer. So we should just know how to draw these, right? Our perfectly competitive firm has a Mr. DARP curve here that is perfectly horizontal. Mr. DARP stands for marginal revenue, demand, average revenue, and price. P's and Q's, here's our marginal cost. All right, so um, our marginal cost, price, and quantity. Remember, where marginal cost and marginal revenue, where they meet is profit max. So profit max is right there where marginal revenue equals marginal cost. We need to know where that is, and that's usually the first thing we always find uh, after we've drawn our graph. 
We know our price is $20, again, because Mr. Darp implies that all of these are the same thing. They told us our price was 20, so we know our marginal revenue is also 20. At this point, our marginal cost and marginal revenue equal one another, and that is profit max. Um, we try to find, let's draw in our marginal revenue. We know it's 20 all the way down for each unit, so we can charge $20. We want to be as close as possible to where these are equal to one another. Now, they aren't equal here, but they are as close as possible with our marginal revenue being just a little bit greater than our marginal cost. So we're probably just on the other side of this quantity. We would probably say something like this is four units, whereas this would be five units here. And I'm going to get rid of that quantity in the center there. Obviously, we can't produce a half a unit, so we can either produce four or five units. On this side, it looks like right there our marginal revenue is slightly greater than our marginal cost. Here our cost is greater than our marginal revenue. So our cost here for the fifth unit would be more than what we're taking in for our good. That would put us at a loss for that unit. So we don't want that unit. We want to reduce our amount of production. We can't get here exactly between these two, but our, so our next best choice is a quantity of four, where the marginal revenue is slightly greater than the marginal cost right there. That is our quantity we produce. So we would say that we would produce, let's write it out for just a second. Uh, this firm would produce four units as marginal revenue is greater than marginal cost for the fourth unit. And I would want to go a little further and say, but not produce the fifth unit and then explain it as marginal cost is greater than marginal revenue. That's terrible writing, but hopefully you can do better. Understand, the firm should produce the fourth unit as the marginal revenue is greater than the marginal cost for the fourth unit, but not produce the fifth unit as marginal cost is greater than marginal revenue. The first thing we want to do is answer our question here. Indicate the firm's profit maximizing quantity of output. We would say four, and then we would give our explanation here. Just make sure it's clear, understand, not like mine, a little bit more organized, obviously. See uh, four units, and then your explanation. Um, all right, D, given your results in part C, explain what will happen to the number of firms in the industry in the long run? Well, uh, to know what happens to the number of firms, whether there's more firms or less firms, uh, we need to know whether we made profits or losses in the short run. So we do have our total cost. Our total cost is 72 here. To find out whether we made profits we need to know what our total revenue is, take away our total cost, and that should give us our profits if we made any. We know total revenue is price times quantity. Uh, we know that our price is 20 bucks. We know that we sell four units, so our total revenue is $80. Can we see that? If our total cost was 72 and our total revenue was 80, we have positive economic profits of $8. In the short run, and this is the way we always say this, in the short run, if we're making positive economic profits, in the long run, firms will enter, chasing those profits, right? So as firms enter, and obviously firms enter and supply increases, um, this implies that there's more firms entering this industry because there were positive economic profits in the short run. And that's exactly how we would explain it. We would say um, the number of firms increases as positive economic profits in the short run. All right, uh, E. And for E, I think I'm going to have to, I want to get rid of this so that we can draw a little graph here. And I know my graph is not going to be perfect, but I'm going to do the best I can to sort of explain this. Because this, um, this is a little bit more 
in depth and hard to understand if you don't have a graph, I think. Or maybe it's easier to understand, but it's hard to draw the graph and make sense of it. So um, let's see if I can do it. Uh, we says, assume this firm operates in a constant cost industry and has reached long run equilibrium. If the government imposes a per unit tax of $2, indicate what will happen to the firm's profit maximizing output in the long run. So let's draw it. Let's say we have our market and we have our firm. We'll do our P's and Q's here. Remember now, the market can also be called the industry. Here they call it the firm operates in a constant cost industry. Same thing as a market. Industry and market are the same thing. Don't let them trick you. Uh, here's our firm. Right? We know that they're price takers. So the price is going to be this Mr. DARP is going to be horizontal. Here's our marginal cost curve. Um, we're going to show profit max where marginal revenue equals marginal cost. And we're drawing and drawing our ATC just kissing where they meet. Now, this is a market and firm in long run equilibrium. Then they say there's a $2 tax. Now, I want to drop back just a second. Constant cost industries imply that the price will always return back to the same price that it started at. All right. Um, if it is a constant cost industry, it will return back to the same price that it started at. Um, if the government imposes a $2 tax, what's going to happen is marginal costs The firm operates in a constant cost industry. 